Welcome back to The Narrative. I'm your storyteller, Kalistra Faria. Well, the political leader, long-standing political leader of the People's Action Movement in St. Kitts and Nevis, Sean Richards, announcing he will not seek re-election when the party's convention comes up in the summer of this year. Uh, PAM's uh, convention is due in June. Uh, Sean Richards says he won't be contesting. It's time for new blood in the party. He joins me now on The Narrative to speak about that. I'm also going to ask him whether or not he regrets team unity, which uh, collapsed before the last general elections, uh, which were called in St. Kitts and Nevis. Welcome to the program. Thank you. And good morning to you also, and good morning to your listeners. What I did announce is that at the next convention of the People's Action Movement, I will not seek re-election as the political leader of the People's Action Movement. And why is that? You, you, you have served for a long time, yes, but why, why this moment in time when the party um, is in what some may say is a difficult position coming off of the, the problems that you, that you just had recently, you know, with team unity and all of that, and uh, losing uh, the, 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 the government? Why at this time is Sean Richards planning to step away at the next convention? Sean Richards has been elected as the leader of the People's Action Movement since 2012, so approximately 12 years now. When I became the political leader of the People's Action Movement, I gave a commitment uh, then uh, that I uh, will take the party into government. And indeed, I was able to live up to that particular commitment so that by the next election, which was held in 2015, the party was in government as part of the Team Unity Coalition and the party at that particular point in time had a majority of the seats in the coalition. There was a subsequent election in the year 2020 and again the party was returned to government with four seats. As some persons would be aware that term was short-lived in that the Team Unity Coalition fell apart and in 2022 we were back at the polls. The party won one seat in that particular election and the person who was victorious happens to be myself. I have been an elected member of parliament since 2004 when I first decided to enter elective politics. At this particular point in time, it is my view eh, that I have not been given the best of service to the party over the last year or two. I do believe that as individuals, whether in politics, in an, in an organization, we need to make these particular assessment and determine what is eh, best. We need to be honest with ourselves. I believe that at this particular point in time, the party will be best served by someone else leading the party. The last set of studies that I have been doing are actually studies in the field of change. And I do believe that change, a positive change, can be good for an organization. In my view, the party needs new ideas, the party needs fresh blood, the party needs innovation, etc. And I want to give someone else the opportunity to do so. The electorate itself, at some particular point in time, becomes sort of weary of seeing the same old faces, hearing the same old voices. Sean Richards is not going to stand in the way of Pam getting a back to where it ought to be of PAM getting back into government. And uh, I am strongly of the view that at this particular point in time, it is best for someone else to do so. So, so you said two things here that I, 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 want you, I want you to speak more on. You said for the last year or so, you have not been serving the party as well as you, that, as you should. And uh, you also just said, um, you talked about getting out of the way for someone else to uh, move the party forward. Why have you not been able 
in the last year to give the party the attention that it needs? There are two things which I think uh, basically uh, would have hampered uh, that. I have been pursuing a, a doctorate and that has been taking quite a bit of my time. So I now really need to concentrate on the completing that particular degree. And secondly, since not being an, a minister of government, I have also been pursuing the establishment of a business. And that also has been requiring quite a bit of my time. So those two things in particular have really been taken in my interest. For example, shortly after the elections of 2022, I had decided to pursue a certification in certified anti-money laundering specialist. And that again took quite a bit of my time in terms of concentrating on ensuring that I pass that particular exam. And one also, you must be honest that when you enter politics initially, the hunger that you have for it, the belly eh, that you have for it, eh, that eh, throughout the years, eh, that sort of begins to wane. And so I would not say that the same hunger, the same motivation that I had eh, back in even 2004 when I first decided to enter elective politics or in 2012, when I decided to make a bid for the leadership of the party, eh, that they are at the same level then and now. It is at the same level now and then. Now, does, does the, the way <coughs> Team Unity ended up have anything as well to do with the decision that you have made? Because one, one of the things <coughs> that, that caused a lot of friction within Team Unity was the issue of leadership transfer. And um, by giving up the, by, by not opting to, to run for, for the leadership position of Pam again, you're also giving up the chance to uh, ever become a prime minister of St. Kitts and Nevis. Um, are, you, are, you, are you giving up politics altogether or are you just going to just resign yourself to being uh, running in a seat and being an, an, an MP? I have not made a decision as to whether or not I'm giving up politics altogether at this moment. The current term comes to an end in 2027, so I think I have a sufficient time to think about that and to make a decision on that. Now, you asked specifically about the prime ministership and giving up that. What I can say to you is that I am at peace with the decision that I have made. I think in terms of the politics, when I look at my achievements, I feel very, very satisfied and comfortable. As I indicated earlier, my first bid for politics was in 2004. I was a newcomer. The then government, the Labour Party, had all of the seats in St. Kitts. I was the person to have broken that particular monopoly in terms of the seats within the parliament. I was the only person elected on a PAM ticket at that particular point in time. I have contested five elections. I have won all five of the elections that I have contested. I gave up my US citizenship at one particular point in time because pressure was being put on members of parliament who had dual citizenship to do so. Within my constituency, I'm the longest serving representative. I'm also the longest serving representative that the People's Action Movement has ever had in parliament. Perhaps at the time I was elected, the youngest person ever elected on a PAM ticket. There is only one other leader of the People's Action Movement who would have contested five elections, won five elections, five consecutive elections. That is Sir Kennedy, but even Sir Kennedy had his share of losses, which I haven't had. He made it to Prime Minister and certainly the first Prime Minister of the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. I served for seven years as the Deputy Prime Minister and I would have also acted on several occasions as the Prime Minister. But, so but, I am but, but, but so, and I so, feel so, comfortable. So you have been a very successful politician 
in terms of winning. So you've, you, you, you know, your, your record is, you know, you're batting strong in terms of winning. But, you know, you're now giving up the, the ambition that you had because, you, you know, even back in 2012 when you challenged for political leader uh, in the Caribbean, political leader means the possibility of becoming prime minister. So this is, you cannot say with a straight face that you did not have the desire and the dream to be the prime minister of St. Kitts and Nevis. Now, years later, and I did. you're basically giving that up. But you say you're at yeah. peace with that. I did not say that I did not have the desire, but I've reached that stage where I am at peace with the fact that I have not made it to that office. But in terms of the accomplishments that I've had, it's not many politicians within St. Kitts and Nevis who can say the same, and certainly not many who have run on a ticket of the People's Action Movement. But the main prize has eluded you. Yes, the main prize has eluded me, but I'm comfortable. Now, where is Pam at the moment? The party certainly has to do a lot of reorganizing from, uh, from what I, I understand. You know, the, the fiasco uh, of Team Unity certainly was a big hit uh, for people's action movement. As you walk away from leadership, what state is the party in? The party indeed is in need of work, but I can say to you that in terms of the work which is needed, that process has already started. We have been doing quite a bit of work behind the scenes. Our secretariat had been closed. We have reopened the secretariat. We have quite a number of persons who have come forward indicating an interest for candidacy within some of the constituencies. We are doing the necessary work within constituencies to rebuild those constituencies. So I am pretty comfortable that the work has started. And during my address yesterday, I also did indicate that while I am not contesting the leadership at the next convention of the party, Sean Richards still remains a member of the People's Action Movement. So in terms of Sean Richards being there to give advice to the new leader and assist with doing the work that is necessary to rebuild the People's Action Movement, Sean Richards intends to be very much a part of that. In terms of preparing for succession, um, was the party properly prepared to hear that you will no longer be available to uh, be chosen as the political leader of the party? And was there any sort of succession planning that took place? What are the options for, for continuity of leadership? A very good question. The fact is that shortly after the elections of 2022, I did indicate to the party uh, that I... Uh, will take a very hard and intimate look at my ongoing continuance in the politics. Politics begins to take a toll on you after so many years. And unfortunately, I do believe that too many of us in the politics do not know when it is time for us to step aside, for others to come forward, and for others to take the party to the next step. Just as in our regular life as workers, there comes a point in time when it is time for change, when it is time for new blood, when it is time for new ideas. And so I have recognized that, as I have said. So it is time to move on to that next step. I am trying to now remember specifically the question that you asked, I don't think I've quite responded to it. To, 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 you mean this, this last question I asked? And yes. So, so, so I'm asking in succession, are, are there, you know, were yes, the good. sufficiently prepared for your announcement? Did they have noticed that you were leaving and has there been any, because I know the party coming out of this last elect, general elections, it, it, it could not have been business as usual. Were you, was there any work towards a, a succession plan for the party. OK, or, so you, yes, I began. Doing it by air this time on the way to the next convention. And by the way, when is your next convention? It is due by June of this year. So succession, okay, so what, yes. what, what, what's, what's the state of things there? 
Yes, I began answering your question by indicating to you that shortly after the elections of 2020, I had indicated to the party uh, that I will consider my future in terms of the politics. Now, the party executive is such that you have a political leader, you have two deputy political leaders, then you have the chairman for the party, deputy chair, and treasurer, GenSec assistant, GenSec public relations officer. So that if you take the political arm of the executive, you have a political leader, you have a deputy political leader. Now, those persons being deputy political leaders, one would of course naturally expect that these are persons who aspire to become the political leader of the party at some particular point in time. As a matter of fact, when I became the leader, I was one of the two deputy political leaders at that point in time. So you have those two persons as to whether or not any of those two individuals intend to contest the political leader post of the party. I think it's only a matter of perhaps days or weeks that we may get an answer to that. The slate is also open to anyone who may not be at this particular time a member of the executive, but who has an interest in becoming the political leader of the party. So in terms of succession planning, while it is that you may not exactly have something as strategy written out on paper, you know that you have two deputy political leaders. So even in your absence at any particular point in time, one of those persons should be able to step up, even if it's an, on an acting basis, to be the political leader of the party. But I mean, when you, the leader that takes you into elections is absolutely critical. And, um, you know, elections are a bit away still. General elections in St. Kitts and Nevis are, are, are a bit away still. Um, however, the leader that the party chooses has to be uh, someone who can lead the party to elections and ultimately possibly to victory. Do you have anyone in mind? Is there, are, are there names on your short list that you would like to see? Uh, yeah. I do not. Well, the race, as I said, the contenders haven't indicated as yet. I don't oh, have no, a horse oh, in the no, race. I'm, I'm not asking who has indicated. I'm asking who you have in your um, or on paper or in somebody's ear whispered a couple of names or one name. Who would you like to see the party after you? And I am getting to the answer to your question. So at this particular point in time, we don't have a persons of announced that they intend to contend for the position. However, I do believe that in terms of the deputy political leaders, they are quite competent. And I am actually waiting quite anxiously to see if anyone else is going to indicate an interest. So no. I do not have anyone in mind, and Sean Richard certainly doesn't intend to influence the process in terms of who is elected as the next political leader of the People's Action Movement. Shall we, shall, shall we talk about it after the interview, off air? <laughs> There's absolutely nothing to talk about because, as I've said, I don't intend to influence that process, and I do believe that we have capable persons within the party who can take the party forward. When I took the reins of leadership of the People's Action Movement back in 2012, I considered myself to be quite young then. I'm still young. And so the two current deputy political leaders, for example, they are persons who have been out there on the political uh, battlefield, you have John L. Powell, who has served as an MP under the Team Unity administration. He was the former representative for Central Bastille. You have uh, Natasha Shani Gray Brooks, who contested her first election in 2022. Uh, 
she is a lawyer by training, so is Jonel, both relatively young persons. Though Shani wasn't successful in terms of the party, she is, however, quite experienced. She has served in several different positions within the party. So those are two capable persons, and I, as I said, I am not sure who else may come forward. And it is interesting when I get that particular question from persons as to, well, if not you, who? And perhaps too often we tell ourselves that we are invincible and no one else can do what we have been doing. And I certainly don't subscribe to that particular belief. I would also say that it is only in some instances when you indicate that there is a vacancy that you get persons coming forward who you never knew, who you never thought may have had an interest. You get it quite often in terms of the politics. If someone decides I'm no longer interested in elective politics and you begin to do that search for potential candidates and you would be surprised with some of the persons who come forward and indicate that they have an interest in elective politics, persons who are prior to you may not have seen being involved in the day-to-day -day politics, persons who you may never have thought supported the organization, but persons who, when they come forward, they come forward full of skills, full of talents, and those are persons who are able to make a great contribution and persons who are able to go on to become very successful politicians. Any regrets regarding team unity, particularly how it played out in the latter stage of the, of the, of the coalition? You certainly one is disappointed with how we would have played out in the latter stages of the coalition. But I have said to persons that one, God ordained our steps, and I would have been a part of the team unity administration. God would have allowed me to be part of it for a reason. It was a learning experience, one that I cherish. And so I am thankful for the fact that I was able to be part of the Team Unity Administration and for gaining that experience that came from being part of our coalition, being a Minister of Government, serving as Deputy Prime Minister, etc. Uh, Terence Drew, Prime Minister, how's he doing? The Terence Drew administration, unfortunately, has been a disappointment for the citizens of St. Kitts and Nevis. Too many persons are complaining about the lack of performance from the administration. Persons are complaining uh, that the ministries are not functioning well. The government isn't meeting the needs of the people of St. Kitts and Nevis. I personally believe that the ministers of government are spending far too much time flying, attending meetings overseas, rather than settling down to learn the business of governance. As a matter of fact, you hear persons complaining every day that the economy of St. Kitts and Nevis is quite flat, opportunities are lacking, young people who expected jobs are still awaiting jobs. The government made a promise to the people that they were going to build 600 homes every year starting from last year. To date, only two of those 600 per year have been delivered to the people and so basically, nothing is happening in the economy of St. Kitts and Nevis. When you say only two, like one, two out of hundreds? One, two. Only two. Less than one percent of the homes have been built to date. And this is a contract that the government through the National Housing Corporation entered into with a company out of Trinidad. Unfortunately, Ketitians and Nevisions only learned about it through the 
media in Trinidad. And uh, now <coughs> persons were encouraged to sign up for these homes. The National Housing Corporation had a housing fair. Many persons went and signed up. And you commend the government for wanting to meet the housing needs of its citizens. Uh, but to date, only two of those houses have been delivered. The government is yet to start any major capital project after almost two years in office. Instead, what has happened is very recently, they used a report prepared by Team Unity, a report that is outdated based on the law to give themselves increases in salaries and those increases for each minister total perhaps approximately 35 to 40 percent increase in salaries when you look at performance certainly one cannot say that they have performed it to be able it to say it to persons that i deserve is such a large increase in salary the performance is lacking coming from the terence joe administration crime which had been on control on the team unity is now skyrocketing again out of control this is the narrative i'm your storyteller calistra farrier speaking there with sean richards who is the political leader of the people's action movement he announced this week that he will not be seeking re-election uh, after 12 years as the leader of the party of the people's action movement and uh, he says he has not given the party his all in the last year has not been able to in the last year and is also looking to make way for fresh ideas and fresh blood to move palm forward after its last defeat at the polls in St. Kitts and Nevis. More when we come back.